Welcome to another Glen Tech video. Be sure to subscribe and take a look. We have videos covering every part of website building, cPanel, and much, much more. In this particular video, we're going to be going over how to edit the 3D carousel. What we will be covering is how to change the size of the carousel, how to change the images in the carousel, and how to change the speed and much, much more. Okay, so let's get to it. As you can see, I'm using this carousel. That's how much I like it. It's one of the nicest carousel setups I've seen. We're going to go over how to edit this completely and learn every part of it. Now, you don't need any coding experience. We're going to go step by step and tell you exactly what to do. Just follow along in the video and you will be able to set this up any way you'd like. So the thing we're going to be using as an example is a big contemporary. So let's go there. Get our demo up. And this is, of course, the part that we're going to be editing. So first thing we need to do is log into our cPanel. Now, if you're unfamiliar with cPanel or you've never used it, we have a complete set of videos explaining every part of it. So subscribe and take a look at it and learn something. I always try to tell people in the beginning, you know, people get overwhelmed and they're afraid of it and they look at it and they're going, oh my God. But it's very user friendly and very easy once you start trying to use it. So take a look at the other videos if you're not familiar. We're just going to assume that you already understand basics of it. So we click on our file manager. We go public HTML. The next thing is how you have your store set up. So if it's set up under a web address.com, then you will already be in your store. But as you can see, this is in subfolders. So we need to go a couple more subfolders. Zen, big contemporary. So this is what your store will look like. So what we need to do is we need to click on includes and then templates and then our theme. These are the themes that come with the Zen cart and this is the one that you've added. So whatever theme you've added that has this carousel on it click that and then we go to the first place we're going to go is common and then we're going to go header PHP TPL header PHP click edit edit and then we're going to scroll down should be at the very bottom and we're going to scroll back up some and here we go 3d carousel is what it's actually called so the first edit we can do, all of this stuff is not editable or it doesn't do anything except the programming of it. So you have to be careful and pay attention to what you edit. Now, what I generally do is I will go from here, right, and I will copy the whole entire thing. And if you, it should go all the way down and say script end. And then I will copy it. And then I will put it in Notepad. Okay, so if something happens, you mess up, well, then you just simply go back to where you were, you know, your 3D carousel, and paste it back in the way it was originally. That way you save yourself a whole lot of headache if you do something wrong. Now, this number here isn't necessarily going to be the same on your place, but it'll be somewhere similar but it's pretty much at the bottom of your page. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to edit the padding. Now what padding is, is the amount of room that's up top of this slider and amount of room that's at the bottom of the slider. So we're going to go through an example and we're going to be extreme here. Six, it says 60 picks. So we're going to go 600. We're going to save changes. We're going to come over here. We're going to reload. And you see how much room is up top now? 
you can adjust it to your liking, in other words. Put it back to 60, reload, and boom, it goes back. The same way with the bottom, we got 80 picks. Let's make it 800. So there you go. We got to have all that room down the bottom. Like I was saying, you know, you don't need coding experience for this, but you can't help but pick up a little bit as you go, you know, with a little bit of understanding. So now you kind of understand what padding does, top and bottom. So it's fun to play with and it's fun to learn. And we don't just hand you something and say, here you go, good luck. You know, we try to help you out so you can understand how to edit it a little bit. Now that's pretty much all that we got right here in this section. So all the rest of this is just the way it turns and the way it shows and displays and everything else. Now there's one other edit we can make and you can see how this has a shadow of a white shadow in the background. It changes when you go over it. We can change that a little bit. Now here it says FFF and it's got a hashtag. That is a shorthand for a color. If you go to Google and you type in website colors, you'll get tons of them. And there's three basic ways of displaying it. You got hashtag and then letters and numbers or just letters. You have the solid color, like if you just write it down. And you got what they call RGB, which we don't really have an example of here, but any of those colors will work if written correctly. But like I say, if you Google in website colors, you'll have tons of them, but I'll show you what this does. So let's reload. You see we got a red tint behind it instead of the white. What that does, because we wrote a solid color, you don't need the hashtag. The difference is if you write red, how many shades of red are there? You know, there's probably an infinite number. And again, this is just saying white, FFF, is a shorthand for white. All Fs are white, all zeros are black. With the hashtag and the letters, you can put different shades. So you could get a red shade that's a little bit different. Anyway, that's a long subject, but as you can see, it's back to white. So then we scroll down some more, and like I say, all this stuff is just primarily to get it to work. Okay, and then we come down to this part of it. Okay, okay. so here we have our image, the way our image is stored there. So we're calling them image one, image two, up to eight. And we're going to go over how to change the image, so don't worry about that. We're going to try to understand how it works in this section first. So if we look over here, we have eight images. Say, for instance, we only want seven. Well, what we can do is we can take this, and I'm going to copy it, and then we're going to backspace it. Save changes. Come over here and reload. Okay, now three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven images. You can put however many images you want. Now say we want nine images. Right now we're using eight. Well, we can skip down a couple spaces and we're gonna paste this again. And we got two images with eight. So it should show the same image twice, but we got nine total images. Reload. Sometimes you have to clear your web browser or you have to do a hard reload on it to get it to work. I know what happened. I didn't save my changes. There you go. Just a good point to bring that up. It, your browser tries to remember what was being used to save time in reloading. So when you just hit reload like up in the corner or whatever like that, a lot of times it won't refresh the page it'll show the old image so you have to do something to make it hard reload like clear your web browser or 
try F5. Let's do this again. And as you can see, we have two images that look the same. So that's our number eight image. So we have nine images. And this will work out pretty good up to a point. So you can add more images. Let's delete this. Put it back the way it was. Okay. And then we're going to scroll down. And here it has all the variables of it. Okay, and what I mean by variables is how fast it's turning, how big it is, your image size, and so on. First of all, and it's pretty explanatory, how big of the radius. So right now we got 340. So let's just try changing that to 6 to see what the difference is. Save changes. As you can see how much bigger it got. But you see how it's overlapping our other parts. Well, that would take us back to what we changed in the beginning was the, oh, let me find it, the padding top and bottom. So we're going to try the padding top and we're going to make it, you know, 600 again just to show you real quick. So I'm trying to, I know it's a little bit long, but I'm trying to give you every explanation. So see, you got the room up here. So you can adjust your padding to get that out of your part there. Okay, so where were we? We were 640, let's put it back 340. And we put our padding back so that fits. I say you want it, you can even make it smaller. You can make it 240. Let's see what happens. So it's fun to learn, you know, and play around with and see what happens. Now the images are getting real tight and they're starting to overlap each other. But say you only have three or four images, then you might want to make it smaller. So it's good to know how to do that depending on what you want to do. Okay, now the other one I recommend you just leave alone. It says auto rotate, so right now it says true, and if you put false in there, it won't rotate, but that's the whole point of the thing is to rotate. So I would just leave that part alone. alone. Then you have rotate speed. So right now you can see it's 60. That means that every 60 seconds, it makes one complete turn. Oh, we didn't put it back to our size, did we? There we go. So every 60 seconds, it makes one complete turn. So let's try 100, see what happens. Save changes, reload. Well, it's slowed down. It's kind of hard to tell with just that. Let's try 300. Okay, now you can see the difference. See how slow it's going? All right, let's try it the other way. Try six. There you go. Now you can get dizzy from it. So you can see how that changes. Put it back to 60. And it's a nice even flow. But you may want it to go slower so you know people can look at their image more or what have you like that. The other thing you can edit is image width and height. As you can see, width of the image, height of the image. Let's try changing the height to say 400 instead of 200. So make a 470. So 
So you see how tall that is. So it's interesting, you know, you can what you can do with it. Let's change this to 400 too because they were both 200. See what they're coming out like. You know, your picture will get distorted in some cases. So now they're, you know, overlapping each other. But if you had a couple images, you could make it that big. And then you could make your circle bigger. And so on like that. It will distort your pictures depending on how they are. So you got to play around with that a little bit. Let's put that back. 200. 220, 270, and we're back. That is pretty much all for this section. The rest of it is all here, and that's just real advanced coding to make this thing work. You almost have to be understanding coding how before you can do that. Okay, so that finishes up pretty much everything here. Let's close out of this. Let's go up one level, and then we're going to go to images. Now, we're still in the big contemporary theme, images. And then you see here's our images. If you remember on the other page, image one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are our images. First thing we need to do, of course, you can only have one image that's with one name, because if you had two different images with the same name, it wouldn't know which one to show. In order to change the images to the ones you want, what we have to do, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rename these. Now, if you're sure you're never going to use them, you can delete them. Just remember what the name was so you don't have to change the other end of it. But we're going to rename it. We're just going to stick a 1 after it. Image 2, rename, and stick a 2 after it just to make it different. And we're not going to change all the images. We're just going to do a couple of them. Then what we need to do is we come over to Upload. Click Upload. And we have an Image 1 and an Image 2 that we're going to upload. We've pre-named them that. Now you can upload them. And, you know, what you, like we just changed the name here. And then you could rename it here if you'd like. The only difference you have to be careful of, you see, the one, image one is .jpg. And we have to make sure they have the same ending, too. So we're going to rename that to PNG. So they're the same. We're going to go over here, and we're going to reload. You see we have two different images there. Those are the ones we just uploaded. It's that simple to change the images. And you can change them, you know, however you like. Again, you know, to put it back, say you want to put it back, well, we can delete that image because we say we don't want it. And then we'll delete image two because we don't want that. And just to show you, if we go over here, we reload, we'll have blank slots. You see how they're blank? That means that something is wrong with the address. So if you see it look like that, you don't have your, your address correct. So see, we got our address for the image 1-1. One, one. So let's rename it again. Get rid of one of those 1s. Come back over here, reload. See, now we're only missing one. Our image address was wrong. And again, we can rename that to 2. Come back over here. And we got that. Personally, it's worth it to me to spend you know, an hour or so to learn how to use this. It is such a cool slider or carousel, and you can do so much with it. You know, it's worth spending the time on it. So I hope this video helps you out some. And if you have any questions, be sure to ask. 
subscribe and take a look. We have tons and tons of videos like this. They're all aimed at, you know, helping you help yourself. In other words, not couldn't imagine what it would cost to pay somebody to set this up for you when you can do it for free in an hour or so. So thank you for watching. You have a pleasant day, and we'll see you in the next video.